Hello everyone, Kevin here today, and I got this question on my Learn in Braco 7 ebook page on GitHub, and it has to do with multi-site configurations for an Umbraco install. And so I thought, you know what, this would be a great video topic. So let's go ahead and do it. So if we get logged into Umbraco here, you can see that um, uh, it doesn't look like really um, anything special here other than it's got three nodes here. And these three nodes actually map to three different websites. In fact, one of them is my blog and one of them is my son's lacrosse site. And uh, my blog, I don't post that much. And the, my son's uh, lacrosse website, he also, you know, is just kind of learning the internet and things like that. So it doesn't post a lot there. But the point is, is you can run more than one website with Umbraco, or at least a single core. And so what I want to do here is rather than do a, like a step-by-step, -step, I just want to show you how one looks like here and you can kind of build it however you want. So the first thing you'll notice here is we have um, what I call, I think, uh, site document types. And we could have called this whatever we wanted to. This doesn't have a template or anything like that. This is basically an organizational unit. Within this, um, as you can tell, this is my blog. We have a home page and we have a site settings node. If we were to look at the document type here, we have a home page document type there and we have a site settings document type there. So if we look at my church website, it's going to be similar where this is, is a site node right here, doc type. But however, this right here is a special uh, particular doc type and it's the Oak Grove home page doc type as opposed to just the home page. So when I started out the journey, this was just a single website install, and then I added multiple to this. That's why I didn't name this one blog homepage, but I certainly could have. Now, if we look at the site settings here, this is its own as well. And again, the site settings node in all three cases here do not have a template. The reason I have a different doc type for site settings and home is because I want different sorts of controls on each one of these. Now, if they all had the same exact cookie cutter, everything, then I could have reused the site settings doc type. So that's a conscious choice that I, I did not do that. If we expand uh, the blog homepage here, we have all the different pages types that I can have here. And again, let's just kind of look at the doc types. This is an about me page. This one is a contact form page. This one is a Slack notification page, so on and so forth. Um, uh, actually, this one is a, this one's actually a blog post page. So if we were to look at the blog post, you can see they're organized by year and, and uh, by month. Um, looks like I just used a blog post page there to uh, handle that page there. These are server error pages or just error pages. And this one here is also the same one here. So they're both error pages. However, I do take, hey, what code should you uh, show on the other side? And um, things of that nature, you know, a little message. Oh, no, what'd you do? I have an RSS page here. Uh, this has its own template. We're, we're going to look into the templates and all that here in a minute. I just kind of want to give you an idea of the structure here. And if you're brand new to Umbraco, you may uh, not know that you can do what's called a list view over here. And uh, if, if you don't do a list view, your alternative is this tree view here. So if we uh, go down to the uh, church site here, you'll see that we have different icons. That just typically means we have different uh, document types. So if we were to look here, this is the Oak Grove About Us page. And if we contrast that against my blog here, About Me page. So again, I could have used the same thing here, but I want to make each site pretty unique uh, in that respect. Um, and we've got the, the uh, usual suspects here, uh, site settings, and we've got the uh, error pages and whatnot. So another thing that we need to be aware of is the domain. So we don't want uh, my blog domain to have anything to do with the Oak Grove one over here. So if we were to right-click this here and hit culture and host names, this is my point of entry for this particular website. It isn't this node here, but it's this one here. And if this will kindly load for us, you can see that we have different domains in there. And uh, those have nothing to do with the domains down here. If we were to come here, there you go. So uh, that's how you get your point of entry into the site. In fact, if I were to click here on this About Us, you can see the URL is the domain slash about us. So it has nothing to do with this top node here. It has nothing to do with driving the URL, that very top site node there. Um, one drawback to this particular setup, because there are several, is multi-tenant functionality 
requirements or, or thing packages don't always translate well. For instance, you'll want your users to only be able to see their site. You don't want the Oak Grove people to see my blog. You don't want the blog people to see, well, that's me, so I see everything. And you don't want the, the lacrosse site to be able to see the other two. So uh, when you do that, you actually set the root node. In fact, we can go into the users here. And if we were to look at this user here, uh, you would see that uh, their root nodes are different and I locked down their um, sections as well. So therefore, um, that's kind of how you limit uh, who can see what. However, there's still some gotchas here. One of the gotchas is the recycle bin. There's only one recycle bin. And if you limit somebody to not be able to see the root, they cannot see the recycle bin. And on top of that, even if they could, they it's potential that they could um, see somebody's re uh, deleted node there. So it's something to, to be aware of. Uh, this redirect URL management here, uh, this is a new feature to Umbraco 7.5. This is not multi-tenant friendly. In fact, you'll want to disable this at some point for your site. The reason is, is if a uh, redirection occurs over here on the blog and it'll show up here well it'll, it'll show up for everybody and they can actually manage the other site so it's not multi-tenant friendly um, you can do your own solution uh, you might try the uh, 301 url uh, package i haven't actually used it it may be multi-tenant friendly it may not be um, if we were to look into, let's see, what should we look into here? Uh, media. Media is another thing here. I, I create a folder for each particular site. That way they can only see uh, this root folder here. Now, of course, they can add a bunch of stuff there. Um, say, uh, the lacrosse one here, too, they can add their own folders and whatnot. But the point is, is they can't see each other's items. Now, there are additional gotchas here, and it has to do with searching with examine. So... Um, this search right here um, is not scoped um, out of the box or in this situation I can see everybody's I believe it does work here to be able to say okay only see um, the stuff or the search results can only be what I can see however it's on the front end so if I were to search right here on the front end of my site, I don't want any church or lacrosse things to show up. And similarly, I don't want any of the blog stuff to show up in these results. So that you'll have to go into your exam and, and actually uh, come up with some different strategies to limit the results to only show on, on your particular page or for one particular page. So that's a, a definite gotcha that you're going to want to look out for. Um, other things you want to look out for is... Uh, properties here. So if I were to go into one of these guys here, oh, let's, let's go into the common one here. Oh, nope, that's not what I want. Uh, what do I want here, Kevin? Oh, the default. Yeah. So I, I moved everything into default, just kind of move them out of the way. Uh, Multi-node tree picker. So if we were to create one and multi-node tree picker, foo, and I come down to here. Um, it's it's right here. This uh, where you want to be careful because if you select something here, that that could work. Um, but if this is a generically reusable uh, data type, you're probably going to want to use some of these different XPath um, helpers and placeholders for you. So that's something you can Google on your own. But that's something you should be aware of that. It, uh, you know, is not multi-tenant friendly. Uh, speaking of not multi-tenant friendly, typically when you have sections like Umbraco Forms um, and these two, which are my uh, two personal projects, these are not multi-tenant friendly either because usually if you have to give access to a person, it's then at this level, you don't have any additional um, safeguards in there to say, oh, we'll only show them their stuff. And, and the same problem exists for Umbraco form. So something to be aware of. And uh, members. Members are also the same way. It's kind of difficult to uh, say, well, only show me my members and only show me, you know, the members for individual websites. So there's some definite... Um, things you need to be aware of. You can overcome a lot of these through some custom coding and some uh, other third-party packages are multi-tenant friendly, but in general, it's just something you gotta worry about. Also, there's some collisions here uh, with uh, different, uh, let's see, if you were doing multilingual and you were doing a dictionary terms, you might have a situation where, where you have to duplicate a lot of things because one client wants it one way, one client wants it the other way. Um, the languages are a global uh, install thing. So if, if one supports German and the other one supports Spanish, uh, this may not be a good situation for you. 
Okay, so you now are probably wondering, great, Kevin, what's the code look like in Visual Studio? So this is a non-cloud project, so this is like a works anywhere type thing, except for maybe cloud. Um, the arrangement I have here is I have uh, these five projects right here and a solution. And if we open up this one here, this is basically the install of Umbraco here. And this is a fairly clean installation. It's as clean as I can get it. In fact, the only thing that we really have is these app plugins. Everything else that has to do with each individual website is somewhere else. That includes all the views. So there are like no views here at all. So uh, if we were to look at the blog here, I do have, it's, they have their own assets. So here's my uh, JavaScript, CSS, less, all that good stuff. And each site uh, follows this pattern. I have uh, all my custom Umbraco stuff. So controllers, um, you know, content finders, things like that. Events, helpers, of course you can do this however you want. Here's my models, here's my views. And you may be wondering, Kevin, how the heck do you get your website to run locally or even in wherever um, because the views are not in the actual Umbraco project. Well, I have a grunt file that actually performs a lot of these tasks here. So if I scroll all the way to the top here, you can see I'm uh, copying the blog or whatever, blah, 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 into the correct output directory. And then I have a watcher and things like that that will actually detect, oh, you've changed your uh, view. So go ahead and move it over. So when I'm actually uh, testing and whatnot, it all actually is in that Umbraco project, but temporarily. So I got to make sure I tell my source control, don't commit anything from here. And then when I push this to Azure, because I host uh, my stuff on Azure, I use a Kudu deployment, uh, custom deployment script that basically does the same thing. It says, hey, oh, by the way, before you finish up, can you copy everything out of this pro uh, folder here and this one here and do it for all the projects and dump those over here into and the views here. Now you may also have noticed that I have a separate folder here for each one too, because we're actually gonna not just take everything that's in here, we wanna take this folder right here. And so we have the blog, uh, Oak Grove and LAX ETC folders in here. That's because I have a custom view engine uh, in effect. And that's actually in Learn Umbraco 7, um, one of the chapters on how to actually separate all your Umbraco views into separate folders. So that's a little bit of magic there um, that you'll be interested in. Uh, I do have a common uh, thing here where I'm doing, uh, you know, events and, and uh, searching. So the searching here might actually be helpful because this is where you'll actually notice that, um, or at least, well, don't notice the, uh, the, the red squigglies there, I promise this works. Um, I'm actually, I actually have my own uh, exam and raw exam in their statement there where at some point I actually say, well, you know what, but limit all these to um, the one particular uh, path. And I have something called node helper. And what node helper does for me is it basically will um, say, well, I know what site I'm on currently. I don't have to do a bunch of boilerplate code lookup. In fact, all I have to do is node helper dot instance dot current site dot home dot path or whatever. So really, um, it's a singleton. Yes, I know it's a singleton, but it works great. Um, it knows the current site uh, based on your HTTP context. And then the home page is uh, a configurable uh, item. And this is actually a part of a larger package called Grease. And that's a separate package if you want to look at it. Grease is kind of getting old and, and bloaty, but the concept of this node helper um, really helps out. In fact, Let's go look at some of the views here. So if we were to look at the base view here, you may be wondering, great, Kevin, how do I get the site settings and do something with it? So um, let's go find the footer. Bear with me here. And you can see, I don't know why none of my statements here are, yes, I, I want that. Um, okay, those are hard copied in there. Um, Let's go to maybe the church. Actually, you know what? The navigation of the church. Yeah, sorry. I'll eventually get us to where we need to be here. So if we go here, we hit nav bar. Uh, you'll be able to see in here that we do node helper to instance that current site, that site settings. Then it's kind of normal in Racco because site settings is I publish content at this point. So um, that is uh, how I handle my easy lookup of values. Uh, again, I use Node Helper. What the heck is Node Helper? I know. I get that. It's in my uh, grease package. But again, it's just a singleton that basically says, okay, on, on startup, 
uh, let's make an observation. The observation is, is we're always going to have a home page and we're always going to have a site settings and maybe we always have a insert page here and this, uh, this singleton will actually just be available. It says, okay, yeah, just go get me that. Now there's a lot of gotchas with caching and stuff like that. So I actually have what I think is a clever workaround. I'm actually just storing the ID of this particular node, that particular node. Then I just use a uh, Umbraco uh, typed content and say, hey, just go get me that. And it's actually very fast and bada bing, bada boom. Uh, my code's very, very, um, very literal here. I don't have to, again, say, go find my ancestor, go do this, now find my descendants. I don't have to do any of that. So um, in general, I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how I was structuring everything here in code and uh, with uh, Umbraco doc types and whatnot themselves. Now, this is highly, highly, highly uh, you can change it based on whether you're using Models Builder or Ditto or, you know, how you want to organize your nodes and whatnot. So it's completely subjective. But I hope you learned something today. And uh, thanks for watching.